Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour Finals Day 4 and this is the only decisive game. Um, just for your information, in the game number one, Magnus Carlsen played as white and he had the winning position. He couldn't find, you know, how to how to win and Hikaru Nakamura escaped, you know, uh, um, from the lost. Uh, he found the resources and he drew that game. It was very, very sharp and very, very scary. Uh, that was a draw. The second game was also drawn um, uh, by Magnus Carlsen. He played as black. He went for the quite safe, well-known variation for him. Uh, and that was a draw. And in the third game, this is the game number three. So Magnus Carlsen again wants to strike, um, you know, as white, while Hikaru Nakamura uh, wants to defend and go to the blitzes where uh, he has, uh, you know, huge chances against Magnus Carlsen as he is very, very strong um, in blitz time control. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Magnus Carlsen open with e4, we have e5, knight f3, knight c6 and now no, not Rui Lopez. Magnus Carlsen doesn't want actually Hikaru to go for the Berlin defense and, you know, draw very fast. Uh, Magnus went for Bishop c4. So we have Gioco Piano on the board. Uh, Bishop c5, castle by Magnus Carlsen, knight f6, d3, d6. And it's, you know, a very well-known variation. And it was played already 400 years ago. It's played now uh, as well. Uh, very harmonious. Uh, everything, you know, the Bishop are already developed, both of them. Uh, then the diagonals for another bishops are also, you know, open. Uh, this is, you know, how the beginners play, but also the masters on the top level. Uh, we have c3, so preparing d4 in the future. And now the main line, I will just show you um, the ideas here is a6. And after a6, bishop goes to b3. Bishop can retreat to a7, very safe square, you know, far from the attack uh, after d4, that would be a tempo for white. Uh, knight b2, d2, and after uh, castle, h3, h6, uh, taking away um, the squares from the minor pieces from both sides. Uh, and then after rook e1, uh, just, you know, prepare the push d4. Now, um, this pawn gonna be defended by the rook. So pretty typical. Black can try something like knight h5, try to, you know, go to the, um, the f4 square, maybe prepare um, f5 in the future. Uh, but white also has the answer, knight f1, and now bishop guards um, f4 and so on. So this was played plenty of times. However, Hikaru didn't go for a6 system. He played h6 immediately. So now he controls um, g5. So for example, the bishop cannot go there. The knight cannot jump over there. Uh, we have rook e1 by Magnus Carlsen. So a very typical um, idea, of course. And now castle by Hikaru Nakamura. Knight b to d2. And now a5. a6 was also possible. This is well-known theory. Uh, a6 variation I show you already and all the ideas. Uh, and now knight f1 by Magnus Carlsen. Remaneuvering this, um, this knight. This knight want to go to g3 and then uh, maybe in the future to f5. Uh, we have bishop e6 now uh, countering the bishop on, on c4. And here, because the pawn it was not moved to a6, but on a5, uh, there is the possibility of playing a bishop b5. Uh, not pinning the knight, however, you know, this is possible. Knight e7, uh, and only now d4. So striking in the center, we have e takes on d4, c takes on d4, and now the bishop uh, retreat to b6. And now knight g3 by Magnus Carlsen. And here the main line is d5. This is what Hikaru Nakamura played. Uh, we have e five and now knight e4 and now you would ask okay but white gonna win um you know the pawn so uh it's uh it's possible to play uh, and indeed this is one of the variations so knight e4 is possible and after d takes on e4 rook e4 uh black can actually get the pawn back but this is pretty uh pretty interesting i mean uh 
it's it's not so straight you know how to win back the pawn it's quite complicated so you need to know the theory you can get some advantage other advantage that the pawn but if you want to win the pawn then you can do it this way uh, c5 strike the center so bishop e3 defending and queen d5 um, attack the rook so bishop d3 defending now bishop f5 rook f4 now exchange the bishops and now don't take this bishop yet but first d takes on c5 with the attack on this bishop so bishop c5 and now what black can do uh, of course the queen defends both of the bishops so uh, you know this bishop can take on c5 and this bishop gonna hang but if black want to win back the pawn have to play um, after bishop c5 have to play knight g6 with the attack on the rook and also attack on this pawn so here is the idea rook has to retreat so uh, rook d4 uh, and only now queen c5 and now white also get back the material so rook d3 uh, and now as you see the knight can take on e5 uh, pretty simple so knight e5 uh, and white can exchange the pieces or play something like rook d5 with the attack on the queen but of course after exchanging the knights with check um, that's gonna be a draw uh, completely symmetrical pawn structure and you know only heavy pieces on the board so there is no hope that's gonna be a draw and these players of course in this uh, format of the tournament doesn't want a draw maybe Hikaru would like to you know go for this variation and just draw however Magnus Carlsen is not interested this is why he played bishop d3 uh, and now of course white want to win the, the material so um, the knight has to has to go so knight g3 we have h takes on g3 and now an interesting move by Hikaru he played a4 um, a4 with the idea of playing a3 and asking Magnus what you gonna do with that pawn uh, so we have bishop c2 for now attacking this pawn uh, helping Hikaru to make his decision uh, however Hikaru doesn't need and he he intended to play a3 anyway and now uh, this is the big decision for Magnus what he want to play b4 of course is possible b3 is possible as well uh, but Magnus doesn't want to have any you know uh, pawns on the on the side and sometimes in the end game they can be you know really nice asset so he simply take on a3 uh, we have bishop g4 so pinning the knight by Hikaru Nakamura and now a4 uh, a4 now the pawn is defended and also it makes the space for the bishop so the bishop can you know come to this diagonal pin the knight and for example be exchanged for the knight uh, Hikaru went for queen d7 and now we have bishop a3 as planned pinning the knight rook f2 e8 and here Magnus exchange uh, this bishop for the knight we have queen e7 that's not the queen this is queen e7 and now queen d3 uh, unpinning the knight but also uh, threatening the checkmate on h7 a pretty simple chess we have g6 now blocking that threat and now the knight is free so knight h4 and this is quite serious threat you know uh sacrificing the knight on on g6 so uh what hikaru should play in this position hikaru uh could go for queen g5 uh but he says okay magnus i'm gonna move my queen from the king side so feel free to actually attack on g6 and uh, and let's see what's gonna happen and magnus said okay so let's go for that we have knight g6 and now of course if you if you take with the pawn um that's that's you're gonna lose that game that's not possible this is just you know a massacre uh, but only queen d4 this is what Hikaru Nakamura played so a pretty fancy uh, idea because now uh, Hikaru can for example exchange the queen and then take you know um, the knight for for free so why not also uh, there is the attack on f2 uh, and Magnus Carlsen here calculate very very precisely he played the best move in the position he could just retreat uh, and this is okay however he played knight e7 knight e7 extremely strong move of course uh, the knight cannot be taken if knight is taken then we have the checkmate so that's not possible this is why Hikaru played king f8 uh, and now knight d5 
and now Hika Hikaru has to make the decision what to play uh, and this is what Magnus actually commented so Queen d3 exchanging the Queens of course it's uh, it's okay however uh, white gonna have this extremely strong pawn uh, in the future play f4 and so on and uh, position of white gonna be really comfortable to play uh, but Magnus said that in this position what Hikaru should do is playing rook e5 rook e5 you know the the, the knight is attacked twice for example uh, so here knight b6 would have to be played and after queen d3 bishop d3 just exchange all the pieces and after c takes on b6 magnus would have one extra pawn but it completely doesn't matter this is a draw and it's impossible to win so um that's evaluation of magnus carlsen uh, however hikaru uh, you know sense that okay it can be very very dangerous for magnus and he played queen f2 and magnus told uh it's not really great because after king h2 what are you gonna play next what are you gonna play next? How to continue the attack? Uh, Hikaru went for rook a to d8 and Magnus started to think, okay, maybe I missed something. Uh, maybe I missed something. Uh, rook f1 and asking Hikaru, okay, what do you have here? Uh, and here now the queen is trapped. And if the queen is moved to c5, this is the only square where, where queen could go, then of course we have rook f7. And after king f7, uh, queen g6, and as you see, this is already... Uh, there is only one legal move first, king f f8, and now rook f1. So the, the rook gonna join the party. Uh, the only move now is, is queen f2, so black have to give back the material. Uh, and after rook f2, bishop takes on f2, there is queen g4 winning the, the bishop. And if black takes the, the knight, then of course we have queen f5. Uh, don't even need to you know take back the material uh because there are you know mating ideas here king e7 queen f6 and this king has nowhere to go king d7 is the only move bishop f5 the bishop joins the party controls the, the escaping way of the king so um the only move actually is rook e6 and after queen e6 of course it's completely uh winning for white with extra queen that shouldn't be a problem uh but what black could play is something like rook d5 and this is the best move in the position what black should play um, and then after queen d5 bishop e6 moving this this loose bishop attack the queen so the queen could uh, retreat and this queen also can retreat to e3 uh, but then it's still, you know, bishop b3 and white has, you know, extra exchange. So it should be, you know, winning for white. It's still a lot to play as, uh, of course, black has pair of bishops. Maybe white would even exchange the bishops, maybe not. Uh, but also this should be, you know, a win for white. Uh, however, Hikaru has different plan, a, a little bit shocking, rook e5, and here Magnus told, okay, maybe I missed something, uh, first of all, this is the checkmate, okay, uh, g1 is controlled by the queen, so this is the checkmate, uh, Magnus play rook f2, so now there is no checkmate, as the, as the rook blocks, uh, of course, uh, and now rook d to d5. So there is always time, you know, to take the rook uh, and that's going to be pretty dangerous. Uh, so Magnus say, OK, uh, now I want to, you know, remove the shelter with check, with tempo. So we have rook f7. And now, of course, the uh, the rook cannot be taken because uh, then this rook gonna join the party and wins the game. So rook f1 and after, let's say, king e7, there is queen h7. Uh, king d6 then queen h6 and and so on so king c5 let's say and now it's still very dangerous of course uh the the the, the rook can come to h5 and so on however uh bishop g6 solves the problem and it looks like okay it's not however at the end of the day uh white gonna end up you know being exchanged up and um, and also two pawns up so rook h5 and after exchanging everything uh then we gonna have rook on f5 winning uh back the the material and uh, and you know being exchanged up it should be winning for um for white
or in the critical position here uh, white can have even even stronger move uh, queen f8 this is another way to win that game and this is quite more uh, dangerous because um, this pawn actually controls b5 the queen controls all all the dark squares and now black has a has a choice bring the bring the king to the fourth rank but of course the the rook gonna come and then the queen gonna checkmate the king so that's not the way uh, but we even with king c6 is not enough because this rook gonna join uh, anyway on, on f6 yes black can play something like bishop e6 you know queen e8 and king can hide uh, however in this position white has uh, a really nice move so actually if you want to you know finish off Hikaru Nakamura then you can pause the video and try to find the winning continuation how to break this fortress uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay ready? So uh, okay material is is better is uh, white stands better already so g4 is enough to win okay and there is no checkmate yes bishop controls g1 there is there is uh, no attack on h5 anymore because the pawn controls h5 and there is also escaping a uh, way for the king so uh, this is one of the ways however bishop f5 is much stronger and now this bishop is under attack three times and it cannot be defended and if bishop is taken, and then of course we have queen e6, and this of course is also uh, losing. Uh, now this rook is pinned, so uh, after exchanging the queen for the bishop, of course it's winning for white. So uh, king f7 cannot be taken, and uh, Hikaru Nakamura probably, uh, you know, didn't calculate that, but he see that already he is in the in the troubles. So what he wants to do is king e8 and asking Magnus, okay, how you want to continue? Because checkmate is still on the board and I'm going to checkmate you um, in the next move. And now you don't even have, you know, bishop on g6. Uh, and here Magnus uh, says, okay, I'm going to give you back some material. So queen d5. And now if rook goes to h5, then of course uh, queen going to take this rook and two bishops against two rooks that of course should be also enough to win uh, so this is why we have rook d5 now this is again the threat of checkmate and now we have bishop g6 very nasty move protecting h5 but also um, there are some discoveries for example you know picking the, the bishop discovery uh, just come to mind or even you know picking the rook discovery so uh, both of them cannot be defended this is why we have king d8 and now rook e1 so entering um, the last piece um, to the game and now how to continue uh, as black because black are in the huge, huge troubles. Uh, if black tries something, you know, um, you know, very active, let's say, okay, rook d2, uh, getting to the second rank, what is the idea? Rook f8 with check and after king d7, this is actually the only move, bishop e8, again, uh, controlling the light squares here, um, and after king d6, uh, then rook f6. Uh, and now king c5 and the idea is to play let's say a5 and now this bishop can retreat to, to a7 or can take in both cases the, the bishop gonna be the loose piece and this is another loose piece so there is no way to actually avoid you know losing uh, one of these pieces uh, white just need to you know um, check the king so rook c1 and let's say if the king goes to the fourth rank then of course um, this bishop is lost with the check uh, and if the king still staying on the fifth rank and then still bishop f7 king e5 and now uh, rook f4 attacking this bishop so the bishop has to be moved or maybe this pawn uh, can can support but then we have rook c5 and uh, winning this bishop so this way or another uh, black gonna lose one of the bishops and the game 
So Hikaru tries something else. He played c6. c6, he says, okay, I'm giving up the one of the pawns. Uh, and Magnus say, okay, thank you. Uh, but now we have bishop c7. So um, the rooks cannot be connected on the seventh rank. Uh, but that's not the problem. Rook e8 by Magnus Carlsen, we have king d7. And after rook h8, Hikaru Nakamura resign. Uh, he resigned because Rook is coming to h7 and uh, as I said, this way or, or another, Magnus gonna win the, the bishop and that's gonna be, you know, lost game. King d6 is possible, but then Rook h6 and now if the king st starts running, then this bishop is under attack. Uh, if not, uh, if for example, uh, bishop a5, then still we have bishop e4 uh, with the check and, uh, and yeah, king c5 now simply exchanging the stuff. And now we have uh, two rooks against two bishops and four pawns uh, against one pawn that is you know easy win for white this is why after rook h8 hikaru nakamura resigned so this was the game number uh, three and in game number four magnus carlsen managed to uh, draw as well so here are the final scores and uh, as you see the first day Hikaru Nakamura won then Magnus Carlsen won then Hikaru again and this time Magnus Carlsen equalized so we have at least two more days um, of the grand final or maybe three days uh, we will see two two more matches are guaranteed so if you don't want to miss any other games you know on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and See you in the next one.